Good morning, class. So, again, no, um, we will have Philippine Accounting Standards discussion. This is PAS 28, Investment in Associate. So, what we will learn here is we know what is meant by significant influence. We identify the factors that would indicate significant influence. To understand and get acquainted actually with the equity method of accounting for share investment and to identify the circumstances when an investment will not be accounted for under the equity method. So again, our reference material is Valex et al. 2020. Okay, so... PAAS 28 is actually entitled Investments in Associates and Joint Venture. So actually for purposes no, of the discussion of this chapter, we focus on investment in associate. Um, however, the same principles actually apply in accounting for investment in joint venture and investment in subsidiary using equity method. So actually itong dinidiscuss natin dito, investment in associate, uh, under equity method, the same uh, principles will apply you know, to investment in joint venture and investment in subsidiary as long as equity method yung ginagamit. Okay, so let's define. No? Um, we have associate. What is meant by associate? Okay, associate is an entity over which the investor has significant influence. Okay, so let's underline significant influence. Now, what is meant by significant influence? Okay, significant influence is the power to participate in financial and operating policy decisions of the investee. So, therefore, my voting power siya. Okay, so again, meron siyang voting power. Okay, and second is... It does not control, no, or joint control those policies. So, wala siyang control. So, nakaka-vote na siya, but wala siyang control. Okay? Or joint control over those operating policies. Okay? So, um, PAS 28 actually provided practical guidance. Paano ba natin malaman na may significant influence? So, ito yung application ng significant influence. Okay, so if an investor holds directly or indirectly, no, through the subsidiaries, 20% or more, no, of the voting power of the investee, the voting power, ha, not the shares, okay, 20% of the voting power of the investee, it is um, rebuttable presumption na, meron siyang significant influence not unless it is um, proved na wala siyang significant influence. So, for short, yung um, presumption natin, pag may 20% or more, meron siyang significant influence. Okay? So, if um, the investor holds less than 20%, it is presumed again na walang significant influence investor not unless it is clearly demonstrated by additional evidences. Okay, so ano yung evidences na pinagsasabi natin? So, there are actually five evidence of um, demonstrating significant influence. No? So, beyond the um, basic 20% threshold on um, voting power, so meron pang additional evidences. First, representation on the board of directors or equivalent governing body of the investee. So, pagkasali, represented, pwede ka ma-represent sa BOD, no? si investor, meron na siyang significant influence. Second, participation in policy making processes including participation in decisions about dividends or other distributions. Okay? So, that's a sign of significant influence. So, 
um, minsan kasi, um, especially with the pandemic, no, um, the BOD or companies are actually deciding, no, whether to pay dividends or not, no, considering the um, cash, liquidity, and financial position, no, amidst um, economic downturns, no, um, brought by COVID. Okay, so, pero, pag, uh, yun na nga, pag si investor, meron siyang participation on those um, policy-making processes, then that's a um, indicator of significant influence. Another, material transactions between the investor and the investee. Okay? So, material transactions, uh, maybe kasali sa um, value-added supply chain, no? <clears throat> Next, we have interchange of managerial personnel. Okay, so pwedeng magpalit-palit ng managerial personnel. Okay, so just look at um, companies, no? Um, minsan magpapalit-palit sila, no? Um, may, um, for example, no? Pangilinan ang, okay, so kung may interchange, that's a significant influence. Okay, and we have provision of essential technical information. Okay, so pag mayroon yan siya, may nag exist na na significant influence. Okay. okay, so how do we measure investment in associate? So, PAS 28 specifies that investment in associate will be measured using equity method okay so it is actually based on the economic relationship between investor and investee so yung inaassume natin dito na single economic unit lang sila okay so again applicable lang ito when si investor meron siyang significant influence over the investee okay so what are the accounting procedures so first the investment is initially recognized at cost. At cost. Okay? Subsequently, okay, increased or decreased, no, to recognize the investor's share of the profit or loss of the investee. Of course, after the date of the acquisition. So, kung, um, Gano ang pagbili, no? Pag-purchase niya, madadagdagan ng share niya sa profit or mababawasan sa share niya sa loss ng investee. Okay. Next, investor share in the profit or loss is recognized as investment income. Then, distributions received from investee reduce the carrying amount of the investment. So, magde-decrease, no? Um, yung um, caring amount niya, whether maka-receive siya ng cash or property dividends. Okay. So, the investment must be in ordinary shares. Kasi kung preference share, um, technically, walang non-voting, no? Equity yung preference. Okay. So, um, madidecreasean pa ito ng impairment losses at saka mag, um, possible pa may increases or decreases to recognize yung share ni investor sa changes ng uh, proportionate interest arising from um, yung mga hindi na recognize ni investee in profit or loss yung mga other comprehensive income so, yun ang mga items in the other comprehensive income can increase or decrease dito. Okay? So, um, again, um, investment uh, in associate are recorded as non-current assets. So, may mga pagkakataon din na yung investment natin in um, associate shall not be accounted under equity method. So, kailan niya mangyayari? If the entity is a parent that is exempted no, from preparing consolidated financial statements or if all 
again all ang nilagay ni Sandai of the following apply. The investor is a wholly owned or partially owned subsidiary and its owners do not object to the investor not applying the equity method. Again, no? Yung owners, no? Ay, si investors in general, okay? Do not object, no? Um, the investi, yung... Um, Pinagbilhan, no? Do not object if the investor will use other method, yung cost method. Okay? So, the investor's debt or equity are not publicly traded or over-the-counter market. The investor did not file its FS with SEC for the purpose of issuing stocks, no? In the market. And the ultimate or immediate parent of the investor produces consolidated financial statements available for public that is in compliance with PFRS. So, exempted yun sila sa equity method. So, therefore, itong mga investments na ito in these circumstances will be accounted for as financial asset at fair value through profit or loss or Financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income or non-marketable investment at cost or investment in unquoted equity instrument. Okay, so ito yung mga exemption from equity method. Now let's go to impairment losses. Okay, so sa impairment losses, kung yung... Um, Kung yung carrying amount daw ng investment natin exceeds the recoverable amount, ano ba itong si recoverable amount? Yung recoverable amount is measured as whichever is higher between the fair value less cost of disposal. So again ha, fair value less cost of disposal versus value in use. Kung sino yung mas mataas sa kanila, yun yung recoverable amount natin. Now, magkakaroon ng impairment loss Kung yung carrying amount ng investment natin nakalagay sa books natin, let's say 150, pero yung recoverable amount na mas mataas na yun is only 120, so may impairment loss ng 30. Okay? So, um, dito yung um, impairment loss natin, okay, will be recognized um, to the whole investment. Okay? to the whole investment. Okay, kasi yung goodwill is not separately recognized, no, from the um, investment. Okay, so, again, ha, impairment loss. So, dito, tinitingnan natin si fair value, less cost of disposal, at saka yung value in use. Value in use, ito yung present value, no, ng mga estimated future cash flows. Si fair value naman, ito yung, um, ibebenta natin in the market. Tsaka yung less cost of disposal niya. So, whichever is higher there, yun yung i-compare natin sa carrying amount. So, again, mag impairment losses tayo kung yung book value na nirecord natin is mas malaki pa sa totoong recoverable amount niya. Okay? So, that is in uh, impairment losses.